get up with the Lord, and if you think that you're strong enough to walk around without a frontal lobe, be my guest. I don't, I don't suggest it. And actually, Dr. Akio Mori at Nihon University in Japan studied the same thing when they're playing video games. He, he hooked up a monitor, looked at brainwave activity, and it was the same thing, but even stronger with video games, lulling down into this sort of alpha trance. So we know that these games have a lot of spiritual messages, just like the many movies. A lot of these messages are even Gnostic, which means that the gospel story is flipped upside down, Satan is good and Jesus is bad. Another problem with these games is that it affects the brain. When you play video games, what happens is that the frontal lobe, which is the most frontal part of the brain, is suppressed. And the Bible even talks about the frontal lobe. It is so crucial for our walk with God. You can find this in Isaiah 1 verse 18, and it says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Let's do a little 101 on the brain, the frontal lobe. Very important area of the brain. This is where we experience spirituality, morality, and the will, reason and conscience, judgment and decision making, prayer and worship, discerning spiritual truth. All these things take place in this very important area of the brain, but not just that, also empathy, being, having compassion for others, and altruistic love of others, and get putting their needs above your own. Now you know, based on that list, this is a super important area of the brain to have strong, healthy, functioning. Now there's another area of the brain that's not talked about as much as the frontal lobe that I want to mention just briefly, and that's called the limbic system. It's often the, the competitor of the frontal lobe. It's, off, it's often the, the opponent of the frontal lobe. The limbic system is known as the lizard brain by evolutionary psychologists. Psychologists. Now, I don't believe that we evolved from lizards, but I do believe, and, and the science shows, that these are where our more animalistic tendencies, our more base passions are rooted out of that limbic system in the, in the lower midbrain. The fight or flight mechanism, in other words, fear or aggression, those are limbic system impulses. The appetite for food or for sex, so you've got your lust there, your desire for fleshly things, that's also coming out of the limbic system circuits. How about this list? Fear, stress, lust, impulses, worry, anxiety, anger, irritability, negativity, and aggression. Different studies have shown that this part of the brain, the frontal lobe, is inactive or suppressed, we could say, while we're playing video games. The challenge is, if we have an inhibited frontal lobe and someone provokes us, then we rise right back and we might want to fight. There are four brainwave patterns that are active throughout the day. Um, we keep switching between these brainwave patterns all day long. The first one, and the most important one, is beta. Beta is when you are critically analyzing, so when your frontal lobe is very active. So if somebody would come to me right now and tell me that Satan is good, I would say no, I reject that, because right now I'm reasoning, I'm analyzing, I'm critically thinking about what that person is saying. Second one is theta, which is when you're in light sleep. The third one is delta, when you're in a deep sleep. And the fourth one, which is very, very important to understand, is alpha. Alpha is when you are in the state of trance or when you're just relaxed and you're sitting next to a river on a, on a, on a sunny day and you're just enjoying God's presence and God's nature. And your response to that would be, would be like something like, oh, this is amazing. God is so awesome. What an awesome nature. What an awesome creation and, and, and awesome environment he has created for us. So alpha is not necessarily bad, but it's about being in an alpha state at the right time. Hypnotherapists even admit that they are trying to get people into this alpha state in order to hypnotize them. P. Siobhan Scott and Niels Clark in the book Game Addicts talk about that there is some sort of a hypnosis that occurs when you are playing video games. And actually, Dr. Akio Mori at Nihon University in Japan studied the same thing when they're playing video games. He, he hooked up a monitor, looked at brainwave activity, and it was the same thing, but even stronger with video games. 
lulling down into this sort of alpha trance. There's an interesting story about how someone's frontal lobe was affected and his character changed 180 degrees. Now, talking about the mind and what can happen if we have an impaired part of the mind. 25-year-old Phineas Gage, he was a Vermont railroad worker. And he was a foreman, and this is actually a picture of him. He was a foreman, and he would work with a three-foot-long, 14-pound tamping iron. And his job was to, as the foreman, when they were clearing for the railroads, they would go through all these rugged terrain, and they would have to uh, drill these holes down into the rock and dump this type of powder, gunpowder down in there, and they'd put a charge in there. They'd pack it with sand. Everybody would get away, and they'd go, and it'd blow up the rock. They'd clear it, and they did that for day in, day out, day in, day out. One day, something happened, and Phineas didn't realize that the order of things hadn't happened properly. And his job was to do the final packing. And unfortunately, nobody put the packing sand in. And when he went down and he struck the side of that rock, there was no packing sand. It sparked and it exploded. In fact, the rod was propelled through his skull. It went right up through his cheek and right out the top of his head. It landed in some say uh, approximately 100 feet behind him. Boom, pop, and he just slumped over. Boom. You wanna know what's amazing about the story? He lived to tell about it. Incredible. It had affected the front part of the brain, which is called the frontal lobe. And this weekend, we are gonna talk a lot about the frontal lobe. Dr. Harlow, this was his attending physician. Here's what he said. This is his actual skull here. Actually, you can go see it in a museum now if you want. And you can notice on his forehead here, you can see that there's a little cap that's missing. Well, it blew this little cap off and it damaged the back of the orbital socket and it damaged his whole forehead. He still lived to tell about it. Here's what his attending physician, Dr. Harlow, wrote. He wrote, Gage was fitful, irreverent, indulging at times in the grossest profanity, listen, which was not previously his custom. Before he was known as, a, as an upright man, a Christian man, someone that, that esteemed his friends and his fellows uh, better than others. And he was just a great, a great upright man, impatient of restraint or advice when it conflicted with his desires. A child in his intellectual capacity and manifestations, he has the animal passions of a strong man. Previous to his injury, although untrained in the schools, he possessed a well-balanced mind. So the reality is, we were, he was radically changed, his character was changed, and he went from being a normal, happy, healthy guy to having fits of rage. In fact, he had, after this, he didn't even want to hang out with his friends anymore. And he engaged in this grossest profanity, eventually left the church and left his wife and went on and joined a circus as a freak cat. If, if God is calling us in Isaiah 118, come let us reason together, saith the Lord, and we play these games with our frontal lobe suppressed, what will happen to our character? Satan has some control over us. Who is in control of your life?